Hello everyone and welcome to CS61B midterm 1 exam review session. My name is Anyat and today I'm going to go over the solutions of question number 3, transposing a two-dimensional triangular array. So here we are provided the definitions of what a transposition of an array is. In other words, we are essentially swapping the x and y coordinates of all of these boxes. So let's try to put those coordinates on the left side of all of our boxes. So for example, if you have the value 5, which is located at 0, 1, its new coordinate is going to be 1, 0, which is this box. And the same applies for all of these values. With that being said, let's go over the solutions together. One thing that you should notice is that the problem specifies that we are non-destructively transposing A. So, non-destructively transposing means that we cannot change the values of our um, variable A directly. So here, the variable A has to always be equal to this triangle, and this triangle, which is the result of transpose, always has to be a new variable. Let's try to solve this problem using that knowledge. Line number six is an if condition. So whenever you see an if condition in the first lines of the method, that means that it's probably a if check, a base condition. And in our case, it will be a dot length equals zero. So whenever our variable a doesn't contain any uh, values to transpose, we always should return a new integer array that doesn't contain anything, which can be done by using this syntax. So we're saying that the number of x coordinates is going to be 0, and yeah, we will, will specify the number of y coordinates in our second box. Now, I feel like it will be a really useful moment to go over the instantiation of a two-dimensional array. So if you do something like this, what does this mean? This means that the number of uh, x coordinates, so the number of rows, is going to be equal to 2. And the number of y coordinates will be equal to 3. So we're going to have 0, 1, 2. And this is essentially your two-dimensional array. And later, you can fill it out with any values that you like. And it will look something like this. However, what if you want to create a triangular array, which looks really different compared to what we have right now? The reason behind it is that it contains a very interesting number of y-coordinates a pair each x per each value of x. So how do we do that? You can do that by using a for loop, which we're going to do some, somewhere here. Now let's create a new variable called transpose, which is a two-dimensional array. In the beginning, we will say that the number of x-coordinates, the number of rows, is going to be equal to a zero dot length and the number of y coordinates is yet unknown. The reason why this works is because a dot zero is going to give us this array and its length is going to be equal to four. So we're essentially saying that we're going to have four rows in our transpose. In our for loop, we need to instantiate our new variable i because we actually need to change all of these values to their new coordinates, which can be done by using a double for loop. So i starts from 0, i is less than transpose that length, and i++. Here you should notice that 
um, we must go over all of these values in our array A. So we need to go over all of them and then find the new values in our second transpose array. So to find the new coordinates, we have to use a new for loop, which will be instantiated somewhere here. We're going to create a new variable j, and j will be less than row length and j++. Here I'm going to specify what row length is in a second, but yeah, the main logic is going to be inside of these two for loops. So transpose at i j has to be equal to a, our input array, at j i which means that we're doing exactly what uh, I talked about before we so started solving this question, which is we are going to look at the x and y coordinates of each of these values and then swap them around. So for the value 5, like we talked about before, its um, y coordinate is no longer 0, it will be 1 and its x-coordinate is no longer 1, it will be 0, which can be done by using this logic. Now let's identify how many rows we have in our transpose array. Uh, the best way to do it will be to create a new variable called row length, which will be equal to a.length minus i. So since our row length always goes down, uh, so here we have four values, here we have three, two, one, it will be really useful to create a new variable, the row length, and change it dynamically uh, by using this syntax. Initially, a.length will be equal to four, and on the next iteration, it will be equal to three, then it will be equal to 2, and then it will be equal to 1, which is exactly what we want. Now we need to change one last thing, which is instantiation of our empty arrays in our transpose. So transpose at i is a new integer array of, of length, row length. If you did not do this line, our transpose will look something like this. Transpose will be essentially uh, something like this. It will have four boxes, but none of these boxes will be filled out with any arrays. So unless you specify that each of these boxes at index 0, 1, 2, and 3 are arrays themselves by using this syntax, uh, our structure will be just empty. Now we need to return our transpose on line 25, and we are done with the question number 3 of the worksheet, transposing a two-dimensional triangular array. One thing that I would really recommend you to do to completely understand what's happening in this question is walking through this example. You need to pass it in as a variable a, and then uh, try to understand why the transpose, if you use a double for loop, results in this triangular array. Thank you so much for your attention and good luck with the midterm.